Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to give an overview of the paper "Multivalent Neural Surface Reconstruction by Disentangling Geometry and Their Appearance." So, the main problem this paper is trying to solve is multivalent 3D surface reconstruction from 2D images. As an example, taking many images of the skull from different perspectives as input, we want to produce an accurate 3D surface reconstruction, both in terms of the geometry and their appearance. In order to produce accurate 3D surface reconstruction, there are many different challenges we need to solve. For example, feature matching is used by many different algorithms to match up the same object in different images. However, feature matching can have many ambiguities, as seen in the image on the right. Additionally, when we don't have camera parameters, the mapping problem becomes even harder. Also, in many cases. The object can have many fine structures or occlusions resulting from multiple objects. The algorithm needs to properly handle the missing information in order to produce an accurate 3D reconstruction. Lastly, many previous 3D reconstruction algorithms do not produce the surface directly, so additional post-processing steps are needed for surface creation. Here are some related works that have been done on 3D reconstruction. When we have known camera, we can apply multivalent stereo to recover depth information from feature matching. Another class of algorithm that has become very popular recently is neural representation. For example, in NERF, a neural network is used to predict volume density and view-dependent radiance from a set of input images with known cameras. However, the goal of NERF is for view synthesis, so it doesn't produce a 3D surface reconstruction. Or handles unknown cameras. When we don't know camera poses, the most popular algorithm is structure for motion. In this case, we try to estimate the camera parameters with the 3D geometry jointly. However, you can only output sparse representations such as 3D point cloud. So here are the main contributions of the paper. Firstly, it introduces an end-to-end -end architecture that handles unknown geometry, appearance, and cameras. And secondly, it produces three D surface reconstruction of many different objects with a wide range of appearances. And lastly, it demonstrates that it's possible to disentangle geometry and appearance into different representations. So in this work, the author introduced something called the implicit differential render (IDR). So under this model, the color of the pixel is a differentiable function in three unknowns: the geometry, the appearance, and the cameras. And this model is capable to represent all the surface light fields that can be represented as a continuous function of the point on the surface, its normal, and the variant direction. So this work employs the same implicit representation for the 3D surface as the deep SDF paper. It represents the surface as a zero-level set of SDF. In this setting, all samples inside the surface have negative values, and samples outside the surface have positive values. The value represents the distance to the surface. In deep SDF, the authors try to approximate SDF in continuous space with a multilayer perceptron. However, one big difference in this paper is that it needs SDF to be defined everywhere, unlike the deep SDF paper, which uses truncated SDF function. So here is a more formal description of the problem. We have three unknowns: the geometry, the appearance, and the camera. In this case. The authors use recasting as the general rendering framework, which has the following setup: assume we have a fixed pixel P, and we share a ray from an unknown camera center C, and this ray has a direction of V, and eventually this ray will hit somewhere on the surface, and we call this intersection point X hat. And at the intersection point, we have a surface normal N hat, and therefore. The color of the pixel P can be approximated using rendering M. And next, I'm going to talk in more details of the different components of M. So first, I'm going to talk about how we're going to find the intersection point. So intuitively, if we keep traveling in the direction of V, we will eventually hit somewhere on the surface. So therefore, the intersection point can be found by using a gradient descent-like algorithm. And after some calculation. Using implicit differentiation, we have an equation for the intersection point, shown as the second equation. 
And after we have this um, surface intersection point, we can also find the normal vector by taking the gradient of the implicit function. So next, I'm going to talk about how we're going to calculate the surface light field. And this can be calculated with the rendering equation, and it has the following terms. The first term represents light sources. So in other words, if the surface is the light source, this term would have a non-zero value. And next, we have an integral that's taken over the half sphere centered at the surface normal, and it has three terms. The first term is BRDF, which is the property of the surface. It represents the proportion of the light being reflected from the incoming radiance. And the second term is the incoming radiance. And the last term is the weakening factor. So it's this composite for the fact that the incoming source is not perpendicular to the surface, so its intensity is reduced. So in this case, we try to approximate the surface light field with the continuous function m0. And we can use the multilayer perceptron to approximate this continuous function. I want you to notice that the viewing direction and the surface normal are necessary in this case for us to learn appearance and geometry independently. And also it allows us to work with the general appearance model. And next I'm going to talk about this global feature vector. So it is used as an additional input to the renderer and it encodes the geometry relative to the surface. It allows the model to work with more complex lighting conditions, such as secondary lighting and self-shadows. So as an additional level of supervision for the geometry, they also also use something called the mask rendering. So in this case, they assume that for each of the input image, we also have a corresponding binary mask that has the label for foreground and background. And then to test if a pixel is occupied by the object, we can basically use this ray intersection equation so if a shine rays through the pixel and intersect with the surface, the equation will output 1, otherwise it will output 0. However, this equation is not continuous or differentiable, therefore we try to approximate it with the sigmoid function in order to use it in the loss function. So here is the loss function for the network, and it has three different terms. The first term is more concerned with the appearance, and the second term is more concerned with the geometry. And the third term is a regulator on the SDF. It put an important constraint on the SDF, so it allows us to use a spherical recasting. And also, it encourages the surface learned by the SDF to be smooth and realistic. So here is an overview of the network, and it has three different components. The first part is the implicit neural representation, which is used to estimate the geometry and the camera parameters. The second component is a sample network, so for a given pixel, it will calculate the intersection point and the surface normal. And the last component is a neural render, so it will output the estimated RGB color. So next, I'm going to talk about some of the experiments performed by the authors. The first experiment is 3D reconstruction based on fixed cameras. So in this case, the author just took the ground truth camera parameters. And in this experiment, the author compared the proposed method with three other baseline methods on 15 different objects. And as we can see in the last row, on average, it has the lowest chamfer distance and the highest PSNR value. So this shows that proposed method has the best performance in both of the geometry and appearance for 3D reconstruction. And here are some qualitative results for the 3D reconstruction based on fixed cameras. So the second experiment is 3D reconstruction based on trained cameras. So in this case, the authors initialize the cameras roughly and try to optimize the camera parameters throughout the training process. And we can see in the table, the proposed method has lower chamfer distance and higher PSNR on average. And this next experiment is quite interesting, where the author took the geometry network and rendering from different objects, and they combined them to produce a new object. However, the proposed algorithm still has some limitations. The first limitation is that it needs a reasonable camera initialization, so it doesn't just work with random initialization for the camera. The second limitation is that sometimes it still fails to capture the fine structure of the 3D model, especially in the trained camera cases. And the third limitation is that it requires a binary mask to be provided for each of the input image in order to calculate the loss properly. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.